This week's episode of 86 Charles is brought to you by Amazon. Go to 86charles.com and click on the Amazon link before you do your shopping. In the year of our great reptilian overlord, 2016. Cows, buffalo, goats, and sheep provide most of the world's milk today. But one day, people could be sipping milk from cockroaches if some scientists get their way. Pacific beetle cockroach moms feed their developing young a milk-like nutrient. Using crystallography on its proteins, chemists have shown that the roach milk is three times more nutritious than cow's milk and four times more nutritious than buffalo's milk. The researchers would like to see cockroach milk turned into a protein supplement to feed hungry people. Welcome to 86 Charles, with your hosts John Darby and Travis Spencer. And with that, welcome to 86 Charles. Travis Spencer, where you been? John Darby, I've been all over the world. Well, all over the world if you want to consider landmarks in Las Vegas the entire world. Right. From Paris to New York, New York. The last two weekends in Vegas, like... I don't recommend going back-to-back weekends in Vegas ever, but it wasn't bad, and I didn't lose my ass. In fact, I almost came back with a bunch of money, and then guess what? I blew it. <clears throat> and it's fun to go the first weekend of the season. I've been telling my buddies forever, because we always go first weekend of the season, that it's the stupidest thing in the world to go the first season. Not only is it still 100 degrees in Vegas, but we know nothing about the teams. Let's go week eight when we know what to bet. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to bet on everybody's fifth preseason game. Yeah, it's you know nothing, and then like by I mean obviously you're still not going to win, but at least you feel like you know a thing or two. Right. We can talk about more about sports later. But uh, how are you, sir? How the hell are you? It's been it's been it's been forever. It, God, it always does feel like forever. But uh, good, you know, hanging in there. Sacktown treating you all right? Sacktown's treating me just fine, yeah. They're all right. You, I'm working you know like what? a Since GD moving, dog, but... Well, that's all you're good for. We just got to put you to work. You don't. If you have any spare time, the world is in trouble. So just keep going to work, I bro. See, I beg to differ. I think I'm very well behaved in my spare time, and I would love to prove it by having more of it. Well, it's time to quit and move to a little <laughs> tiny, weird mountain town like Idlewild. Half of that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> The, that was a really cool thing is leaving Vegas and coming to a mountain town where you leave strip malls and open, nasty, disgusting desert. It felt really good to drive up a mountain to a beautiful area. It's like, well, you know what? I don't have any money in my pocket, but at least I have this. Yeah. At least I got to leave the place that took it. <laughs> and and go to it in a completely different environment. You know, it's no fun going home to Phoenix or to some extent, L.A. looks a lot of the same until you get to a certain point. You know, it's all big shopping centers and strip malls and you know see i don't don't know what it that was very nice something must be wrong with me because i love that i love cities i always feel like that feeling you get when you get up to the mountain and you're like oh cool i'm away from it and i'm in this different environment i get all stoked when i see oh yeah look at all the city lights there it all is Woo! like i just i don't know i like cities i'm citified that's that's called cancer john (laughs) <laughs> well, can we? Hey, Sorry to break it to you. Can we talk about something more important, though? Please. How about roach milk? What's? Oh, that is more important. Have you ever heard of such a thing? No, not. I mean, I've definitely killed a roach before, and like some white, weird, gooey <laughs> substance came out of it, which disgusted me. But this is intriguing. This is super intriguing, and I hope it moves forward. But uh, my thing with it is. Like it, it, there's such insects. If we ate insects and we could get over the stigma, it could really save a ton of starving people. It's super dirt cheap, ton of protein. But I just don't know, especially as Americans, if we can ever get obviously, especially as Americans, if we can ever get over the stigma of eating bugs. Right. Right. I 100 percent agree with you. And we won't. But the good thing about Americans easily fooled. All you have to do is not call it what it is. And and we were discussing it off air, talking about how the, they're, they're going to make some synthetic version of it in a laboratory. 
You don't have to tell people where the idea came from or where the recipe came from. And just don't call it roach milk and it'll be fine. No one will care. They'll think it's a miracle. I want the real deal though, man. I'm I'm a hipster like that where I want to be like, I'm having, I'm at a bar and I have a tiny, it's like, like if you're having a roach milk shot, it has to be like <laughs> one, one tenth the size of a regular shot glass even. And you just pick up your little glass. You're like, oh yeah, this is roach milk. It's uh, full of amino acids and proteins. It's kind of like the best thing for you ever, bro. We accept the fact that penicillin comes from mold, and we take that. I think we could accept the fact that a a hunger problem solving protein is derived from a roach secretion. I think we could get over that. But like, what I want to see, especially for shipping see it the... to other countries, we'd be like, oh, that's so great because we don't have to actually do that. Oh yeah, if you're collecting a check from it, sure, of course, but. I want to see the process. What, like, is there a tiny robot with little, uh, you know, it's got little things that pull down the roach's nipples and a little robot farmer. How does it work? Milking a (laughs) roach. Robot farm. Yeah, like these tiny, twitchy, like faster. It'd have to be faster than a roach's arm. Well, I I mean, I don't, I don't know enough about it, but I don't think it comes from some sort of teat or udder or anything like that. I think it's a secretion from, I would guess, either the mouth or maybe even just from the body. Right. Well, so the this it, they're they're the Pacific uh, the Pacific beetle cockroach, right? And it said that in there the baby it, it gives birth to live cockroaches, right? It's the only it's the only cockroach that does that. Um, so the cockroach they feed inside them, and that's when they feed the, on the milk with like liquid. Liquid. Right. So it's out of there. They don't have nipples that it feeds on afterward or anything right. like that. But oh man. And it's just, and Even again, it's like they're see. using the term roach milk, and and you you start to paint this mental picture of what it is, and then they even compare it to cow's milk and buffalo's milk, but it's not right, not quite the same ballpark. But what's the definition of milk? A well, sure. I mean, you know, a, a, a substance a white created by the the, the mother substance. that feeds. <laughs> it's <laughs> wait, we're getting into something else here. I just it's, wanted to say it's it because. Could. It's the substance that the mother feeds its young with. Right. right? Yeah, that's, that's fair. We, yeah. That, no, it is fascinating. It could save the world along with eating cockroaches and other bugs probably, but will Americans can can Americans come around? That's yeah, the question. We'll see. But interesting. That's that to me is useful science. Could you drink some roach milk? I pour you a glass of, of roach milk right now. Just a tiny little shot. Oh glass. yeah, I'd throw it down. It? I'd throw it down. Yeah. I'm not really afraid. I'm not really no. picky. And I'm a huge insects, fan of milk, heard, too, so sorry. I know I've done, like, chocolate-covered crickets before or something like that. It wasn't that bad. Like, I, honestly, it's not, it's not, there's not that much going on. Cockroaches are gross just because of the connotation of sewer dwellers, you know? Yeah. But I think I could get over it. I had one crawl on my face one time. We are one. I will drink cockroach <laughs> milk. John Derby and the cockroaches are one. <laughs> bring your bring your young to John's mouth tonight, young cockroach mothers. Oh God! I used to have it all. Now I'm rolling with these roaches, roaches, with these roaches, roaches, rolling with these roaches, roaches. Used to have it all. Now I'm rolling with these roaches, roaches, with these roaches. When I woke up this morning and I looked out my door. I thought I heard my milk cow I can tell the way she looked If you see my milk cow Won't you please drive her on home What in the f*** is 86 Chuck? We're all made of 86charles.com, man Oh, you're such an ass Speak for yourself, idiot Let some more hate accumulate It's 2015, what the hell's going on, man? It's scary Strange world we live in Yep the wizard's up to his old tricks. Hey, hey, hey! My boy got some rain! There is so much going wrong in the world that I cannot be concerned with two dudes playing butt games. I don't care. God is an American. God is an American. Nickel. 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 Five topics currently trending. Travis. John Derby, I'm just munching on some cockroaches over here. <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm going to edit that in such a way that it sounds like you're having something totally different. <laughs> uh, 
Well, let's talk. You know what? I love this guy. I'm not afraid to say that. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Rock star Freddie Mercury now has his own space rock. He is the uh, the most recent celebrity to have an asteroid named after him. Freddie Mercury, the late singer for the band Queen, once sang, I'm a shooting star leaping through the sky. Turning lyrics into reality, the rock legend now has a hunk of space rock named after him. The International Astronomical Union has renamed asteroid 1991FM3 as Freddie Mercury. Bandmate Brian May, who has a PhD in astrophysics and his own asteroid, announced the change online September 4th, one day before what would have been Mercury's 70th birthday. The asteroid was discovered in 1991, the same year that Mercury died. So there you go. Freddie Mercury's got his own asteroid, and he joins, this is where I wanted, a long list of celebrity musicians to be immortalized with a small piece of the solar system, including... Louis Armstrong, Frank Sinatra, David Bowie, and all of the Beatles. So there you go. It's Freddie Mercury's flying around out there. Really, Ringo? Ringo got his own. Come on, he's one of. Come on, everyone dogs Ringo, <laughs> man. Why, why just not name it? Just name it the Beatles. Just because he might be the, the least talented of the Beatles, he's still one of the most mu- talented musicians probably ever. Of he course, just happens to be respect. the like, the worst of sorry. the best. That was the go-to joke, obviously. There. I'll stay. I don't even know. Terrible I'm not even that joke. passionate about it. I got super on a soapbox for Ringo there. I know. Got really upset. Are you okay? It's like Godfather 3. Everyone talks about Godfather 3 as the worst movie in the world. It's not. It's just the worst of the Godfather trilogy, which is, I mean, beyond epic. In and of itself, yeah, it's not it's, the worst movie. I mean, if you're sitting down and you like have... The choice of a hundred other movies in Godfather Three, you're still probably not. No, of course Godfather not. No, but 3. I'm just I'm just judging it as a film in and of itself. It's not a terrible movie. Uh, Sofia I mean, Coppola is, is cool. terrible just... in it, no question about that. She was awful in that hey. film. Hey, it came around that she made Lost in Translation later. So thanks for Godfather huh. Three because Lost in Translation was. She's good. a great director. Thank, but she deserves to be on great. that side we'll of the say, game. We'll say pretty damn good. I don't know about great, but well, yeah. Uh, no, this is cool. Yeah. Good for Freddie Good Mercury. For Freddie I Mercury. mean, I love Freddie Mercury. Thing I don't like is if we're really going to name it after him, why do we still have like this little number in front of it? Can we just call it Freddie no, Mercury? I, dude, I don't know how they classify asteroids. And you'll notice I even dropped the number. I didn't even say it because I don't know where it belongs. Well, that's. But I'm sure that there's obviously different ways you have to categorize your, your asteroids. Spin. What the hell do I know about it? I don't know. I mean, it's exciting. I'm happy for Freddie. Heck yeah, he deserves it. I'm I'm just not a big enough Queen guy to get like really super excited. But Queen is great. Well, but I mean I'm not. I didn't take the day off of work or anything for it. But I thought it was interesting enough to uh, read. Now Freddie Mercury Day. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about. Let's go back to science. Oh, I guess that was kind of science. That is science. Kind of. But you bring in Freddie bro. Mercury. Eh, it's it's naming. It's not, I mean, the number would have been the more scientific part of it. It was just a big super fan. All right. So there's a motherless, John, John, hold on. Let me slow this down. (laughs) Do you know that motherless babies are possible as scientists create live offspring without the need for female eggs? You excited? No. Motherless babies could be on the horizon after scientists have discovered a method of creating offspring without the need for a female egg. A landmark experiment by the University of Bath rewrites 200 years of biology teaching and could pave the way for a baby to be born from the DNA of two men. Celebrations in the street, my friend. It was always thought that only a female egg could spark the changes in a sperm required to to make a baby because an egg forms from a special kind of cell division in which just half of the number of chromosomes are carried over. But sperm cells form in the same way so that when a sperm and an egg meet to form a full genetic quota with half our DNA coming from our mother and half from our father. Now scientists have shown that embryos could be created from cells which carry all their chromosomes, which means that, in theory, any cell in in a human body can be fertilized by a sperm. In the study... Three generations of mice have been uh, created using the technique and are fit and healthy, and now researchers are planning to test the theory using skin cells. A quick quote from Dr. Tony Perry, a molecular embryologist, says, Some people say start the day with an egg, 
But what this paper says is you don't necessarily have to start development with an egg. Brilliant, Tony Perry. Thank you so much. Man, the elements of a good line were there, but that was not delivered well (laughs) by Tony Perry. (laughs) Tony Perry, stick to science, buddy. Um, No, this is pretty insane. Like, if we're really going to get there where we don't need a female and we can just take any two cells, implant it, it's kind of scary. This kind of goes back to the last week and it, when we were talking about CRISPR just gonna say. and genetic manipulation. This is the same thing. It's like we're just going to, I don't know, how about we take a, a hand cell and impregnate it and have hand babies so there's just giant hands walking In, in, in a post-CRISPR world, nothing like this surprises me. Right. But, I mean, this is how we get there. This is like the more what you would call natural evolution as opposed to playing with the the, the actual DNA sequence. This is like going to the cells and still smashing them together. I mean, it's the same in a different world, and obviously we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, but but if, if it turns into like, hey, guys have babies now, I'm out. I'm out of the kid game. I'm good. I will not be giving birth. Just because two men, two beings, two beautiful beings who are in love with each other can put their genes together and have a child, that's what you're afraid of? No, that's fine. I'm saying me personally, I would not give birth to a child. I'm not doing that. Do you think the world's just aching, just waiting for you no. to give birth to a child? I don't think I don't think men are having babies coming out of their bodies. I I think that you could take a sperm gene from one man and another and possibly create right. a being. But out what of I it. said is, once it comes to dudes having kids, I'm out of the kid game. I will not ever be giving birth. That's where I draw my line. Once again, I don't think this story is saying that men are giving birth. It's not. I'm saying that once it gets to that, that's the cutoff for me. I'm done at Didn't that point. did you enjoy... This is whatever. Enjoy... This is in, a, in a post-CRISPR world, this does not surprise me. But when we get to men having enjoy babies, the movie... I'm out. What was wrong with the movie Junior? What exactly. Junior? Everything. Nothing. It was a great... Everything. <laughs> oh. See? Thank you. I'm glad you finally referenced a movie for once. Yeah. Yes. If if the world yes. becomes like that, I'm out. You're like you're gonna kill yourself? No. Man, you just want me off the planet. <laughs> no, I would not be having a child. That option would be off the table. Do you still think you are you gonna have a child? Probably not, but it's still an option. Okay, but I as soon as we get to by the a point mule where or something. Yeah. We're getting we're getting too deep inside of the male body. It's time to go. Yeah, it is definitely time to go. Oh, John's to out. a much happier place, fortunately. Please. I'm going to take you to Take Three Burgers at 1230 Fulton Mall in Fresno. What up, Fresno? I'm going to take you to a place called, <laughs> I'm gonna, I hope I'm saying this right, Powamecca Cafe. It is the restaurant concept that Tupac Shakur was developing before his death in an unsolved shooting in 1996, according to the Fresno Business Journal. Uh, take Three Burgers is opening a one-day pop-up restaurant, and it's going to be the Tupac theme. The menu is going to include a California Love chicken sandwich, Hennessy apple butter chicken wings, a mac and cheese burger, and Thug Passion cake pops. <laughs> uh, also featured will be local musicians playing covers of Tupac songs. Uh, the restaurant door, uh, bathroom, uh, sorry, the restroom doors will be labeled Divas and Playas. <laughs> Time Magazine reported that. <laughs> I don't know why that's the only part that they contributed. Say that one more time. What was that? The restroom doors will be labeled Divas and Playas. Got that. <laughs> and that's again. I love that that's cited to Time Magazine. Like, they had to go in there to get that scoop. <laughs> Journalistic integrity. Uh, This is the second rapper tribute for Take Three Burgers, which also hosted a tribute breakfast for Notorious B.I.G. on his birthday earlier this year. So, yeah. One night only, dude. Powamecca Cafe. I think that's kind of cool. I I like a restaurant doing (coughs) one-day themes. You had me until you got to local musicians playing Tupac covers. I don't don't want any part of it. I'm out. Like, if they would play just... Tupac's music. I just I don't want to go to a karaoke bar where people. Well, it's not karaoke. It's musicians. it's actual musicians doing cover songs. What's wrong with that? What if they do it really well? Nah, just just put Tupac over the PA system. Just play his catalog over. But and But you could over do that over. anywhere. The Get point up. is to sell. Come on, you're being such a stick in the mud. That's that's what would turn you off to that. 
Yeah, they're not like it would be nostalgic in so many ways, except until you get there and it's like, oh, Tupac impersonator is rapping Tupac songs terribly because guess what? There was one Tupac, my friend. Well, sure, I don't want to hear it tribute, from anybody else. You jerk. It's a tribute. Yeah, put it on a. Li- okay, lip sync it. I'll let him lip sync. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. That would be even worse. I would rather then they just play the music. I don't want somebody up there mouthing it. <laughs> That's all I. You know what I want? You know what I want? I want a, uh, I want the, what's the goddamn thing that they did at Coachella with the, uh, Oh, the hologram, the hologram. That's okay. The sure. They bring out the hologram, give me a hologram. I'm all in, please. But what, but what if like, uh, what if some cool rock band came in and did like a cool rock version of a Tupac song or some reggae band did a, uh, a reggae version of a Tupac song? Like there could be some cool I'm stuff. Out. I'm out. Come on. You're the worst. If a rock band did a Tupac cover and then got, like killed in a drive-by shooting, then maybe that'd be interesting because that's what would happen if Tupac was still alive. I would have never guessed that Fresno was way cooler than you. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> but here we are. I just, I'm a purist, man. I I'm can't go be get the me cover a thug song. passion cake pop. I've seen too many god awful cover songs in my life that I just, I can't do it. Like, what are we going to get? Like a lounge singer Tupac song? That would be cool too if they did like one or two. That'd be hilarious. Okay. Yeah. California <laughs> That'd be awesome <laughs> 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 Except for you don't <laughs> know actual Tupac lyrics So now we have to move on I don't, I don't know anything I, I, That's all I got That's all I got for you uh, Let's move on to something more exciting Back to science And Russian scientists Apparently there are Russian scientists That are besieged by polar bears At a remote Arctic post A team of Russian weather experts claim that their station on an ice-covered Arctic isle has been besieged by polar bears. word. Besieged. I know you like how I say it. Uh, According to a report by Russian news agency TASS, the five researchers charged with staffing the outpost outpost on Troy Noe Island say that there are about 10 adult polar bears as well as cubs circling their base. A female polar bear spends nights perched outside the station with windows, making it dangerous for the scientists to exit. They have reportedly run out of flares and have lost at least one of their dogs to the Arctic beasts. The presence of the, tol- the polar bears has made carrying out meteorological observations difficult. Russian law outlaws killing polar bears, a globally listed endangered species, so scientists in the Arctic are mostly equipped with flares and guns and rubber bullets. Um... The Russian organization or Russia is sending a ship, including dogs and more flare guns to the beleaguered scientists, but it will not arrive until about a month from now. Um, Something similar happened about a year ago. Five hungry polar bears circled a Russian weather station, preventing its staff from taking sea readings. Uh, So it's not too crazy, but this is double the amount of polar bears and they've lost a dog where the last time that didn't happen. So this is uh, pretty freaky, John. Are you worried for the Russian scientists? Well, I I was more so into, until you told me it's actually happened before. And even though it's getting worse, I guess, it doesn't sound like it's that out of the ordinary. I well, mean, I'd be terrified, but I would like... never be in that situation in any way, shape, or form. So it's hard It's hard to uh, to put myself in that place. But I don't want to be besieged Maybe with global by warming, anything, there's think. less places for the polar bears to go and less food. So now they're preying on Russian scientists. Pretty freaky. And, and it maybe just whole more that the scientists Russia, are there. Though. Maybe the, the polar bears are a little ballsier now. I don't know. Right, if they've been there a couple, if they're there like every other year type of thing. Right. Or ever, if they're constantly there, then they're maybe getting more comfortable with them. But I don't know. No, I don't, I mean, hard to. Polar bears are badass anyways. I don't want to tangle with one, let alone 20. The only time I saw a polar bear was at the San Diego Zoo, and I just couldn't get over how sad it was that this poor polar bear was in San Diego. Yeah. It had to be burning up. He doesn't, he doesn't know wasn't what he's right. doing there. Although everyone but, I mean, loves come San on. Diego. Like, Even a polar bear is probably in de- enjoying San Diego. Surfing. The surfing polar bear. Hell yeah. I am a little disappointed. My perception of Russians is that they, you know, uh, wrestle bears in the streets. So even if you're a scientist, come on. Just a couple bears. You can't you can't go out and take care of them. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm sure that I don't think they they lost a dog. I don't think they're going to lose any people. So you know what would be different if Vladimir Putin was there? I don't think oh, any he of these would bears be would go anywhere riding near this and corralling place. those polar bears. There is hope. 
there is hope when Donald Trump gets elected, Putin and Trump can ride in on a grizzly <laughs> and scare off the polar bears, right? I shirtless. can picture it, man. Oh, of course, shirtless. That's a given. Who rides up front? It's Putin. Putin, Putin definitely, definitely rides up front. And, yeah, and, and Trump is holding it Trump, by his Trump's his, giant his strong hands, man otherwise, arms. would be blocking the view. <laughs> so. All right. right. Well, good luck. Good luck to the scientists. I hope they get out, and I hope they don't lose any more dogs. Yeah, yeah I feel bad for the dog. Totally. It's too bad. All right. Let's move on to other deadly animals. Yes. What do sharks, alligators, and bears have in common? Sharp teeth? <laughs> it's rhetorical. For one, oh. they're not among the animals most likely to kill you. Each of these three species kill about one person per year in the U.S., according to a Washington Post report. By contrast, dogs kill 28 people and cows 20 on average. Uh, So the average number of American deaths attributed to animals each year. Bees, wasp, and hornets, 58. They top the list. Various mammals, such as horses, pigs, and deer, 52. Dogs, 28. They round out the top three. Cows at 20, non-poisonous bugs, such as ants, 9, spiders, 7, venomous snakes and lizards, 6, bears, 1, alligators, 1, sharks, 1. Those figures exclude deaths caused by vehicle collisions with animals. So less than .008% of all deaths each year are animal-related. And uh, just if you need to contrast that with something, there are 33,000 deaths by car accident each year. So we need more autonomous vehicles, and we're fine with the number of bears and alligators and sharks. <sighs> this is good news. Yeah. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep the last couple of nights because I was afraid that a bear was going to kill me. You know what? You know what I couldn't help but notice was completely absent from this list, Travis. Your your born uh, killers. Terrorists? Your born killers. Cats. Cats don't make the list anywhere, bro. Dude, cats know their place in the food chain. They're not killing humans. Then why are they such jerks? Why do they act like they they're run things, jerks. but they're not they're not gonna kill anybody? They ain't killers. I don't they know ain't why killers. Ca- I don't know what I don't know why cats don't like you, bro. That's not my problem. Cats like me just You're fine. Obviously a so what are you worried about? I'm not worried about it. I'm what I'm saying is that you always talk about how cats are pure killers. Blah blah blah. They're not. They're scaredy cats. Frady cats. <laughs> No, they're top of the food chain behind human beings. But they know they're not going to go after a human. Like, what Dude, kind of argument is ants that? Ants kill more human beings than cats. Ants, bro. Do cats Stupid even lift? People kill more. Uh. Do cats even lift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they lift up all the. Cats kill more rats, mice. Cats are like, bo- they kill. All the things around your house that you don't want there. Bro. And all of those things That's kill more humans than a cat. Friend. So they're more badass. Oh, man. You're like, you've got this whole thing wrong. I'm just saying. You just always talk it. about how cats are born killers. They don't even make the list. They're, they're not. A, they're, they're too afraid to take on the big game. That's for sure. No, they're so intelligent that they know, like, you don't, you don't fuck with the top of the food chain, you don't because they're afraid. You don't mess with the guy who's got weapons and guns. You ever, re- you ever like, read the deadliest waste their game? Time? You ever read the deadliest yeah, game? That's, that's Cats want nothing being. to do with that. <laughs> they also don't read. You're, See, you're and they're stupid. Ridiculous. They're not killers, and they're stupid. <laughs> dogs with twenty-eight oh, because... kills. You know, dogs have read the deadliest <laughs> game. <laughs> you know who kill, got killed by dogs? Babies from asshole parents that put a pit bull by their baby. Well, Dogs don't care. Dogs you're, are pure killers, say, bro. There's not there's not a single one. There's not, Gym, on, tan, lions laundry, kill, kill babies. Hiker. That's what dogs do. Mountain lions do kill an occasional hiker. Your study is nonsense. Yeah. You go talk to the Washington Post. It's not even the point, my friend. <laughs> it's not even the point. Cats know their place in the food chain. Which is at the bottom. And they are. You know. So, hey, can I give you, <laughs> can I do one more quick story? killers out there. Can I do one more quick story? Please. I have an update. do 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 so you remember six months ago when I moved out here and I yeah. told you that story about how I lost my glasses? Yeah, my glasses moved, right? have you been found. <laughs> what? Where'd they find Joe them? found them in his car. Shout out to Joe Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> been he was cleaning out his car months? and he moved the seat forward and I guess it was wedged between like the seat and the door or some kind of we- weird way that once he moved the seat forward, they fell out. <laughs> but yeah, he sent me a picture of him like a couple days ago. <laughs> uh, 
Woo! Joe's car has to be like Joe's car has to be like my car if I never cleaned it out because of my girlfriend. She's filthy, just like no. Joe. It was no. It was it was just wedged between the seat and something else. It was not. It wasn't on the floor. It wasn't right. trapped under. So it was. It was suspended in air. <laughs> I'm sure you guys searched it. That no, night dude, that he day. searched we, it at his place, and then he came over to mine, and I and I insisted on going out to his car and looking. I looked myself. I tore that thing up. Could not find it because I was convinced yeah. that they were in there. That day could have gone a lot easier if you didn't have to go to the eye doctor and then go get glasses. Yeah, but dude, still impressive that I got it all done. Were they all scratched up and messed up? No, they actually looked okay, judging by the picture. Nice. Well, they, imagine that. Now you got a backup pair of glasses. Still haven't lost a pair. Boom. Damn. I'm going to send a mountain lion over to kill you. Please. Man. He'd come over and just start purring. <laughs> He'd be terrified of me. You should die because I've of that killed story. more. Mountain I've killed more human way, beings bro. than uh, cats. Or actually, we've t- we're tied at zero. <laughs> hey, hey, shout out to Scoops. Let's move on. Yeah, Scoops, you adorable little non-killer. Like, don't go to Alaska. Scoops will eat you alive. <laughs> Scoops is listening right now. So. Might actually be. Scoops! And he's thinking, yep, you're right. I'm not a killer. <laughs> <laughs> Scoops and Munch, we'll get them together. <laughs> From last week. Hello, folks. Chris Humphreys, Too Short, and Alan Thick. What does it take to get on the Playboy Mansion final party guest list? What's the criteria here? A 70-year-old former sitcom star, a 50-year-old rapper, and a 30-year-old basketball player headline the guest list for a 90-year-old's party? Certainly it doesn't take relevancy. If you're wondering, Mr. Hefner, at what point you became out of touch with the masses, it was sometime in between now and when you first wrote out that guest list decades ago. I do, however, think it's a kind of a fun template for one of those stupid hypotheticals, like what's your dream golfing foursome, who's on your Mount Rushmore of blank, what former sitcom star, rapper, and basketball nobody would you want to headline your party's guest list? For me, it's definitely Alfonso Ribeira, aka Carlton on The Fresh Prince, Juvenile, and Bobby Sura. And I know this wasn't a category, but I'd also make a play for David Blaine, because it's my party. And that guy is amazing. This is Jesse, and getting in the partying mood was my favorite part of last week's podcast. It's time for the failed athlete perspective. Travis. What do you think? Week one, man. It was a good weekend. It was a good weekend. Other than some obvious things. But uh, overall, let's just be glad that football's back. Monday night. Good opening week of football. Monday night was an atrocity. Minus one very obvious thing. Sunday night with the Cardinals blowing a, I'm not going to say a must win, but an, a golden opportunity a very to be winnable a very game. good team. Right. So my uh, Cardinals lost 23-21. to to the Patriots, without Rob Gronkowski, without Tom Brady, without Deion Lewis, without... Without Rob Ninkovich. Right. Missing a ton of players. You almost expected the Patriots to... Not that they were going to give the game away, but it's possible that Gronk could have played. And the reality was, Belichick said, send him out one week, make sure he's healthy for week two, because this is our toughest game. He was in Arizona. Cardinals have to win it. Played... played a crappy game all around. Second half was a little bit better. Fitzgerald to Palmer. Palmer to Fitzgerald looked good, but they missed on a field goal. Defensively, we had the same damn problem as last year. We didn't get nearly enough pressure on the quarterback. Right. Chandler Jones did have a and sack. Our, and our offensive line did not do their job. Right. Evan Mathis went out, so you're already we're already moving the offensive line. But at the end of the day, I think it's one of the worst games that we can play. And it came down to a bad snap on a 41-year-old, 41-yard field goal. And it could have been winnable. Could have been an ugly game that we pulled out a win, and then it would have been fine, right? It would have been, yes. But we 
We shouldn't have even been in a position to have to kick a field goal to win. Right. We should have been up by more than enough at that point. So who do you... And again, I would have taken an ugly win and you could have written it off. But instead, that's just a super, just an inexcusable loss. A ho- that's a home game, and they're missing three of their top seven players on their roster. That's ridiculous. At key positions. It kind of comes down to a rookie cornerback, right? The rookie cornerback who Julian Edelman burned pretty much all game, and then Chris Hogan burned for a touchdown too. You put that on Bruce Arians a little bit for knowing that what's Belichick going to do? He's going to come in, he's going to find this matchup, and he's going to just try to isolate him, his guy, on the rookie. And and it worked. It worked. So give him props. The, the kid didn't deliver. We'll see. I'm not – I'm discouraged. And, and, and what else did Belichick do defensively? He, can, he took away everything that they wanted to do long. Right. We didn't get anything right. long. John Brown was a non-factor in that game. Right. Well, that's how you get destroyed by the Cardinals. Is if you get beat on a couple long balls, you get destroyed. So, of course, Belichick did the smart thing. And look who got two touchdowns because of it. Larry Fitzgerald over the middle. Or, you know, Larry Fitzgerald on short routes. Of routes. But it took, him, it took him too long to figure that out. I'm not. They needed to get to that sooner so that they, that they could open up that running game. That running game never got going. David Johnson didn't have a terrible game. I think, what, 85 yards no. or something like that? On the ground, did he? Or was that like total? Uh, it might have been total. It wasn't a great game. But uh, Patriots defense is probably better than it's been in the last couple of years. They get signings like Chris but Long. they were still missing one of their top defensive players. Ninkovich, yes. Is one of their top defensive yes, players. Yes, but they also bring in Chris Long. Like they've, they're a defensive team. They're, they're just an all-around good team. So to lose to them I, at I don't home disagree is with disappointing. That, but, but that's saying – but Arizona should be one of the, what, top three teams in the league? Well, yeah, this year we should. And, yes, and the Patriots are 100% healthy. They might be the best team in the league. Okay. So if we lose to that team, okay, I can let that go. That's not the team we lost to. We lost to a team that was missing three of their top seven players on their roster in our house. It's disappointing. I know you want to get upset. But in reality, it comes down to a bad snap and a 41-year-old, 41-yard field goal miss. We're going to make that probably nine out of ten times. We're going to make that field goal. So it's one Loss. It sucks to start the season on a loss. We're home next week. But it's Tampa just, Bay. It's, it's a pretty inexcusable loss, though. There's no reason that we should have lost that game. Yeah. You can't justify that loss. To BA's me. not happy, but also, at the same time, I'm not crying. Like that. That happens. And it's, no, I'm not crying. I'm never going to cry about it. But it's not. It's and obviously you're not going to pack up the season. It's not okay. Well, we're you know season's over. No, of course. You know, especially why I'm not going to cry gonna about make the it. Playoffs because I had the under and that field goal puts it over. So I had the under <laughs> and I won fifty bucks on the game. So you know what. Sometimes you got to lose when Travis has got to win 50 bucks. Thanks, B.A. Good job, Cat- Chandler Catazanaro. Good job, whatever the hey, long snapper's if- name is <laughs> and the holder. If I had had 50 bucks on it, I would have rooted against him. That's fine, but <laughs> totally. I didn't, so I was rooting for I'm not for affiliated them. with the team. I really don't care. I just want to win money. Thanks, guys. Right. I don't disagree with that stance. All right, so terrible right. loss. Let's agree, but terrible loss because it was such a winnable game. But... We played the worst yeah. possible game, and it came down to a field goal. And a field goal like that is a coin flip, and we just lost the coin flip. You don't have to give it a silver lining. It can just be we crapped the bed. It's fine. Hey, we'll move guess on. Guess what? That's going to wake the defense up. They're going to play better for the rest of the season. That's it. Well, tell them to knock on the offensive line's door on their way out because they need to wake totally. up. Totally. We need to be control the line, run the ball. That's where it starts. That's where it always starts, right? Always. All right. Who else impressed? Who impressed you this weekend? Um, a few teams. Raiders looked good, and they took a ch- and they took a big shot. That was ballsy. Um, Minnesota out of nowhere. That defense won them a game. Yeah, uh, that was impressive. Mario, and with no Adrian Peterson, basically, Mariota crapped the bed. Was, Mariota definitely crapped the bed. I was I was very surprised about that. Um, who else was there? Denver. They would go back to the Thursday game. Denver looked good. Denver's offensive line looked amazing. Russell Okung from for, defensively former they Seattle looked very Seahawks. solid yeah. too. They were everywhere. They looked good. Once they got to Cam, they started looking very impressive. Yeah, that was pretty brutal the beatdown they put on Cam, just repeatedly hitting him in the head. Yeah. It's been talked about, uh, but yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looked although I mean they they looked exactly how I would have predicted, although D'Angelo D'Angelo Williams looked uh pretty impressive. Yeah, who knew? Everybody like, thirty three so old in the NFL and he was just killing people like well, he did great last year, but that's that's an impressive. I mean, what did he do? Like one forty three, right. I think, in 
one or two touchdowns. That's just good. a sign of an offense clicking. Like Ben Roethlisberger. Right, well, I was going to say that's a system. That's an offensive line. And when when Antonio Brown is taking the top off the defense all day long, that uh, that opens up some pretty wide lanes. How about those Texans? You like those Texans? Texans look good. Texans look good. Brock Osweiler was dealing. He's spreading the ball around. They look good. That's that's who I'm thinking this week. I'm picking up uh, from fantasy perspective. Is it William Fuller? What's what, what's your guy's name? Yeah, Will. You, Fuller. you did call him out as a as a sleeper, right? I did. I well, did. good call. Week one, he had a great week. Yeah, weeks. he had yeah. a great week. Oh, he had a great. We had what like two touches and I think a hundred yards, hundred plus maybe. My sleeper, Marshawn Lynch. Still waiting to hear from him. He's coming around though. But you did see, you did see the report, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, yeah. he's thinking about a week. The thing that sucks is if Whatever. you did draft him or you did pick him up, and I have him in all three leagues now that I'm in. Uh, but it's I'm gonna have to wait till week four or five. So I don't know if I can stash him that long. If I can, I will, and it might be a game changer. But it's kind of tough to but stash someone that game long. Game changer, nothing. Game changer. Are you nothing, kidding me? Man. Put Marshawn Lynch on that Patriots team. Look out. It's done. It's over. Dude, he wouldn't go to the Patriots. What are you talking about? Where else he's going to go? The Seahawks own his rights. I know. I'm saying, who's going to trade for him? That's the, that's the one kind of random trade that the Patriots Nobody. Make. Nobody's going to trade for him. What are you going to give up for that guy? They don't guy? have to give up much. They've just got to give up a pick. And guess yeah. who stashes no, the most picks no of all teams ever? The Patriots. Even when the NFL takes away first-round picks, the Patriots got picks, son. You're crazy. So, uh, speaking of fantasy, John, how'd you do this weekend? Fantasy. <laughs> 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 Unicorn, first week, man. 5-0. and oh. Well, hold on to that because it's not going to happen again. I, I disagree. I disagree. You're that, you're that. I don't think it'll happen a lot, but I think it'll happen that again. That impressed with your teams. You're going to think you're going to go 5-0 and oh again. At some point, Let's yeah. Let's put $5. Hell yeah. I'll, put, I'll, I'll bet you $5 right now you're not going to go 5 and the rest of the season. I'll take right. that. Sure. Yeah, it's on paper. I drafted my butt off this year, dude. A lot of, lot of mock drafts. Good thing we named that episode of mock drafts. No, nah, I just stayed super disciplined, and I roll with a bunch of chumps that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I was in a le- literally in a league where a guy took Eli Manning second round. <laughs> Are you crazy? Did he think it was Peyton? You, and I'm saying it's fine if you want Eli, but you could, and, and if you had to have him, like that was the one guy that you had to have on your squad, or it would not be worth playing. Five or six, right? Take him in the sixth. I never. I mean, I think the sixth is probably the earliest I ever saw that guy go. That's crazy. Second round. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty dope. Second dopey. round. Uh, we had some injuries this Second weekend, round. John. Keenan Allen. May he rest <laughs> in peace. Done for the season. The only one surprised by that is Keenan Allen. Uh, I gotta admit, but I feel you know what, and, and that's that's a jerk thing to say. I feel bad, but that guy was balling on that cart. Yeah, that sucks. He was very upset, and rightfully so, because he knew he was missing another year of football. Yeah, that's brutal. Back to back years like that, right? That's tough. And Ugh, terrible. I had him in two leagues, so now I'm scrambling already for a wide receiver. It sucks, but I'm I'm gonna get Will Fuller. Had him in one. I was going to say, I had him in one, but I've got Allen Hearns or Fuller or Wheaton to back him up. Pretty stacked. So, I'm I RG3, done for the year. Also not a surprise. Well, most likely done no, for the year. No, not done for most the year. Most likely, right? No. No. It'll only done until week eight. Oh, really? Is that the latest? I heard... W- unless something changes. I mean, unless something changes. But as of now, it, it's, it's only until at least week yeah, eight. Yeah, but by week eight, the Browns are done for the season. What's the point of rushing them back? Well, if you're not rushing him back, you still need to know what you have, so you need to decide you if you have give him another nothing. contract let him walk. You have nothing. He's not getting a contract. You're drafting a quarterback in the first round next year. That's what's happening. Oh. What's the guy in Clemson? That's who you're drafting. Watson, right? Is that who it yeah, is? Yeah, that's – he's the consensus number one so far. Uh, Sammy Watkins is a little shaken up. We don't know what's happening with that. Might be a surgically mm, repaired whatever. foot problem. I don't care. Bum wheel. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, oh. Let's cover this Cowboys game. What would you think of Dak Prescott and, and my boy Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, Prescott looked solid. Looked very good, actually. Pretty composed. Came out great. Didn't five really... for five. Like he, he came out really good. Yeah. He looked good. Didn't get shaken. Uh, Zeke Elliott looked okay. Not bad. Not super impressive, though. He didn't light the world on fire. No, he, has, he had a couple good runs. Got it punched in a touchdown. That was nice. Yeah, no, that's fine. Alfred Morris had a solid, couple good solid runs. Solid debut for both of them. But what it really comes down to is not the rookies, but Terrence Williams. 
What is theirs? Yeah, they, Catches they, the ball with seven seconds left. He's got to get out of bounds, give Dan Bailey a 60-yard field goal. Just run out of bounds. Turns in. What is I he I don't know doing? how you don't have the situational awareness. He's been in the league like five years at least, right? Come on. What's uh. Yeah, he's he he knows but and and again it's I don't I don't know what was said either in the huddle or on the sidelines or whatever, but you have to make everyone aware of the situation. Now granted he should know his job right. well enough to know the situation without being told. Right. But you can't assume that nobody doesn't know and you can't assume that they're processing everything fast enough. So you gotta make sure that you say the words out loud. If you catch the ball, run out of bounds. You gotta say it. You gotta say the words. They have to hear that. So you're putting it on Dak Prescott, the quarterback. I see what you're doing. No, no. There's a lot of people Somebody's that could have said say it. it right? I don't, yeah. Like I said, I don't know where they were at and you know what was said when, but you got to make sure that everybody knows. You know the best part of it all, though, right? After it happened, Cowboys Law. EA Sports tweeted, "Terrence Williams, awareness, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow." <laughs> <laughs> there goes his awareness rating sorry terrence nobody was picking you in the fantasy drafts did. this year anyway after we all picked you and you did nothing for us last year yeah no that guy's you're better off taking cole beasley <sighs> all right that might you know what there's my sleeper right there for the cole. week there's my sleeper cole i was beasley. just gonna ask you who you picking up on the waiver are you picking up cole beasley on the and you're playing him this week cole be uh, i mean if i had me personally no because i drafted my butt off and i don't need that i've got depth but if you're a person who didn't, uh, yeah, Cole Beasley would be a good pickup, and I would start him if I had to. It's pretty. And then obviously you gotta you gotta entertain Jeremy Curley as well. Yeah. I don't know if you'll play like I don't know if you'll get those opportunities every week. But. I think if you're in a PPR, you can seriously consider Jeremy Curley because he's gonna get a lot of those passes. He just knows how to get open. He's always been that kind of guy. But again, but you said it yourself. That's week one, and that could have just been a very specific. Hey, situationally, we know we can gouge them with the slot. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that guy's going to get 13 looks every single totally. week. And he's unexpected. Teams weren't even game planning for him because he's only been in on the team for less than a week, right? Right. Uh, my advice to fantasy players this week, stick with your guns. Stick with your big guns. Like if somebody had a bad week Absolutely. last week, don't drop them. It's way them. too early to bench big Absolutely. names. Absolutely. And, and re- receivers especially are notorious for having a bad week and coming back with a huge week. So keep an eye on those guys. Uh, yeah. Don't make too many drops unless somebody's injured, obviously. don't P- People don't talking about, oh, should I sit Adrian Peterson? No, relax. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I love the, the, the freak outs, like they're thinking like they, everything went wrong because one week goes wrong. It's like, all right, rookie, sit down. It's, sit, yeah. sit back and relax. And especially we, I mean, it's like you're going to have those weeks midseason. So especially week one, you just throw that out. It doesn't, week one is week five of the preseason. Absolutely. So, Everybody sit back and relax. Keep your money on the Cardinals. Everything's going to be okay. And my boy, John Smokey Brown, look out. Might get a couple deep balls this week. (laughs) Smokey. Smokey Brown. Smokey! 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 Smokey, what the hell are you doing back here? Hey, nothing, man. Hey, I'm fixing something. Hey, just stay over there. But I thought you wanted me to wash your car. Hey, man. Wash it later. Stay over there. You know I ain't the smartest man in the world, but from over here, it look like you taking it. It's time for the Facebook World News Update. This Real to Someone News Update is brought to you by Roach Milk, the next super gross superfood. A woman in Medford said her angry vagina won't let her leave the house. A man in Los Angeles said he hates when he tells the barista at Starbucks his name three or four times and she still spells cocksucker on his cup of latte. A woman in Massachusetts said Yelp is some white people's shit. Got water? No. Yeah. There's nothing more refreshing than having We have more about some big news that broke this weekend. The State Department saying that Hillary Clinton fainted from dehydration after an illness. Got water? No. I've got water. Experts recommend drinking at least eight cups of eight ounces of water every day. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? No, 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 no. no. Got water? 
cell. I've got water. That's some good stuff. Yeah. One person in her orbit said she won't drink water, and you tried telling Hillary Clinton she has to drink water. Yeah. Can, can someone, someone please, please explain, explain to me how someone is intelligent and accomplished as Hillary? Clinton simply doesn't like drinking water. Your country is in trouble. trouble. Yeah. A woman in Los Angeles said she likes to sweep things under the rug, but now her rug looks like a dirt hill wearing a small frilly hat. A man in Inglewood said he was just walking his dogs and was offered a beer unsolicited. He said no, but only because he didn't want his dogs judging him. This Real to Someone News update is brought to you by Roach Milk, the next super gross superfood. Dad's got notebooks. We don't know what's in her notebooks. She's gonna show us all her notebooks. Little yellow pad. So, here I am. Um, this is the last day of Little Yellow Pad International Edition. I am on the plane in Istanbul, heading out. Oh, I started in London about 684 hours ago. It might have only been like 12 hours ago. I don't know. I'm, I'm really tired. Um, but here I am in my fancy seat, and um, I was going to Little Yellow Pad do one little thing. One moment. Sorry, I had to get out of my magic locker. Okay, this is um, this is my list of things that this is my list of things that I need to declare when I get to Los Angeles. Um, it contains something on all the lines of eight, ten. 25 souvenir keychain magnet pencils, um, six jewelry, including costume and souvenir, uh, 16 glass decorations, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 glass decorations. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, um, but it probably will not surprise you to know that I made my list like three times and then I put it in a spreadsheet and then I categorized it based on type of souvenir. Last year, in fact, um, uh, Travis and John were recipients of um, one of these souvenir keychains, magnets, pencils, etc. cetera, uh, versions when they received their pen from Rosalind Chapel. Uh, this year, you're probably not going to get anything because you don't live in L.A. Sucks to be you. And if you did, you would get an Agatha Christie keychain, probably, from the Pair of Palace in Istanbul. Or perhaps a... Um, button that says vote women from the suffragette movement uh, in uh, London or anyway I don't know um, I realize that I'm saying this I'm sounding a little uh, oh my god thank you you're welcome. sorry my name is Jill Simon I'm happy to bring this flight you need an assistance you can call okay thank you very much thank you oh no I was just that jerk that um, was interrupted while I was doing this and um, didn't get my drink properly from the nice um, attendant. Anyway, uh, it's been a really good trip. Uh, in two or four or eight weeks, whenever we do the next one of these, I will go back to old school little yellow pad. Well, it's probably a lie. I'll probably milk this international thing for a couple more weeks. And um, I don't know what else to say. Hope you had a good week. Hope this made sense. I'm sure it didn't. I'm going to drink my water. I'm going to watch um, some uh, uh, movies maybe uh sorry i had to take a break there watch some movies maybe like captain america civil war or maybe like specter which i try to watch three times now and keep it annoyed and stop watching um i don't know i've got about like 10 11 12 hours left of this trip so um i'm gonna enjoy myself you have a nice day have a nice week and the last thing i'm gonna leave you with is is when you're saying goodbye in turkish if 
I'm the one staying and you're the one leaving, I say to you, calligly, and if I'm the one leaving and you're the one staying, I say, Alas Maradik. So in this case, I, I'm i leaving, Alas Maradik. Calligly is cuter. Anyway, have a nice week. So, I ended up doing a PhD in genetics, kind of randomly, before I did documentary film, but I liked the biology more than the film, so I went in to do biology, and the lab I went into in England uh, specialized in muscle development, and the best animal to learn and to experiment on muscles to learn about human muscle development and human cancers is strangely enough a frog from Africa called Xenopis lavis. And so this frog that's originally from Zimbabwe uh, was actually, interestingly enough, and the reason they use it, the first human pregnancy test. So if a pregnant human female pees in the same water as this species of frog, the frog gets really horny and lays a bunch of eggs. And so these tribes in Africa, hundreds of years ago, would collect these frogs, put them into small pools, and then have women, if they weren't sure if they were pregnant, urinate in that pool. And if the frog, if they saw eggs the next day, they knew she was pregnant. So, it was a, it's a way to get a lot of genetic material very easily. And I think most people know that frogs' eggs are much bigger than, bigger than human eggs. And so you could look at the frog egg under a microscope. And so I would use the equivalent of frog caviar to do my experiments on. Um, but so basically to get, to get the frogs in the right mood, to get their eggs, to do the experiment on, I would have to go to a hospital, uh, a obstetrician birth hospital near our university, collect used or previously used urine samples from the women that had test them in that hospital, bring that back to the university, distill out the chemical we are looking for, which is called human chorionic gonadotropin, which is the same thing you get tested for on those little sticks that you pee on that turns the things feel. That's what makes the frog really horny. And so I would distill out the chemical we needed, put it in the frog's water, set them apart one by one, and then the next day she would be like, hiya! And so I would then reach into the water and grab the female and frogs have this weird evolutionary trait which makes no sense to me but it's true if you cover their eyes they go limp so if you cover their eyes so you grab you bring your hand in their head would be in the palm of your hand and your fingers would go towards their backside and then to get the eggs out you'd have to be like what the male frog would do and kind of masturbate them a little bit until their eggs would pop out their behind and frogs unlike humans have something called a cloaca which is a combined pee poop fun hole so it all happens right there and so you'd you you do this gesture and i'm doing it with my hands right now but it's a i don't know how you describe it it's a, trying to start fire with your fingers a little bit and you'd squeeze their sides and then the eggs would come out and then after that, you could use the eggs for whatever purpose you needed. You clean the eggs off. You do the same with the male of the species, but they're much smaller. So the females are much bigger, and the males are much smaller, about a third the size of the females. And you do the same with the males, but again, external fertilization. So you just kind of like, hey, what's up, from the backside, and squeeze, and then the sperm would come out. And then you could do whatever you needed for the experiment. Most of my experiments involved trying to create a human-like condition in the eggs or something that we knew with a chemical pathway or a protein that we knew that was a problem and I bound it to something from a jellyfish so that we knew the experiment was successful if the egg glowed in the dark. And then that's how I did it. So I spent four years of my life masturbating frogs for all of humanity. You are welcome. Thank you. You, you are a hero. I do what I can. <laughs> was that okay? That's, it was amazing. Okay, good. It was like he was like you wrote it beforehand. <laughs> that was Chesty McRodertson, PhD. Oh wow, Chesty. You gave us a lot to work with here. 
John, this may be one of the greatest stories I've ever heard in my life. This was an incredible story. This is a great story. This has it all. I mean, this with milking cockroaches, this goes right in line. This would have been great for CRISPR last week. There's just so much you can do with a masturbatory frog story. Oh, and in, in all in one fun hole? Holy God. Oh, man. Science is I kind of wish I had a cloaca. <laughs> Could you imagine if you had a cloaca? Just everything came out of this. You know, you just clean one hole. Could I imagine or do I imagine that every single moment of the day? That's all I've ever wanted I've in ever life wanted. was a cloaca. An all-in-one fun hole? Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, I don't know what he thought he was getting into, but to end up masturbating frogs on a daily basis for four years, you know, that takes some true grit. Well, the whole- Shout out to Chesty. Oh, for sure. But the whole thing is wild. I mean, peeing on frogs and they get horny. Like, that was the first pregnancy test back in Zimbabwe. The whole thing is crazy. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre when you kind of get a uh, breakdown of how things come down the cloaca, so to speak, right? <laughs> the cloaca <laughs> of life. Uh, yeah, but no, that was that was a just under four minute story, and I learned as much in that as probably two years in junior high. Uh, yeah. Other than finger fire, I knew all about finger fire before. You know, <laughs> when you're starting. That <laughs> but did you know that that's how you masturbate a frog? Uh. No, but now I do, See? and that's pretty much I'm going frog hunting as soon as I'm done here. I'm walking out looking for frogs. <laughs> you can't just go Start around stroking frogs, fires. man. It's a particular kind. And then, hiya! Hiya! <laughs> uh, the frog goes limp. Oh, man. What a... Ch- Chesty's a born storyteller, man. a special teller, moment. Man. For, for what you would probably imagine is a... And pardon, you know, I hope it's not offensive, but a lab nerd, a lot of charisma, a lot of charisma. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a reason he got out of uh, science, so to speak, and get into documentary documentary filmmaking because he was a great storyteller. That's what documentaries are too, right? No, no, you you have that reversed. He got out of filmmaking to get into biology. Oh, how did I? I thought it was the other way around. I thought he said before. No, he was in film, but he, he liked the biology more, so he got into that. Gotcha. Now, well, I don't know still, what he's doing way. now. So he, he could be the, back to film at this point, but... He had the storytelling chops before then. So, yeah, not a surprise at all. Yeah. No, that was great. And, and of course, Deborah is the best story wrangler in, in all of the U.S., and now she's going global. Yeah. Like, one day we will be able to fund, like, a coffee at... On, during her international trips to get these great <laughs> stories, we'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll pick up the tab on that one coffee. Yeah, well, Chesty is a is a California, I don't know if California native, but lived in California at one point, but now lives in Europe. Yeah, Deb's like all over Europe, right? Oh, we, yeah. We she's... talked about this last week. Turkey, England. This specific trip, though, she's obviously well-traveled. What? Uh, yeah. Like 70 countries or something? No, not that many. What'd she say, like 22 or 30 countries, something like I that? I can't keep up with that. I will say this is I what know. she... Uh, she sent her latest um, little yellow pad from the tarmac in Istanbul. That's global. Exactly. That's powerful, Deb. <laughs> Shout out to Deb. Always. So great. I love these stories. And they're just getting better. Every week they get better. Yeah. She finds... I, it, it's got to be something about her that allows people to just open up and tell stories. Because I just don't think that I would get the same reaction if I were to be like, oh, hey, tell this into this thing. I think people would clam up. Well, yeah, I mean, if I'm sitting in a room with you, I'm definitely clamming up. I don't want to say anything. That's why this thing where we talk over the phone is much better. Because if I have to look at you, I got a little, you know, uh, it's just not natural. It's not fun. There's no free-flowing. You're just a tall, freaky-looking dude. You done? You know? Are you done with whatever that was? <laughs> <laughs> just a tall, uh, freaky-looking dude, you know? Uh, huge, huge shout-out to Chesty McRodertson, Ph.D., um, awesome story. Yeah. You're you're doing you're doing great work and doing God's work, literally. Yeah, literally God's work. Keep it up. We appreciate it. Frogs. And yeah, if if he ever wants to send a, a video, you know, we'd love to see a video <laughs> of the frogs being masturbated. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll admit I would watch. I'll see what I'll see what's up. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see it. You know, it's like while his. Uh, description was great and I have a great mental image I mean there's nothing wrong with getting the actual video and seeing what's happening there true there's nothing wrong with that shout out of course to Jesse 
Always bringing it. Always. Uh, hey, we got to give a shout out to ourselves. Why? Episode 50, bro. We just hit 5-0. Oh, this five is the big 5 Wow. We've, uh, we've come a long way, John Derby. Oh, man. It's... 50 episodes and less than 50 followers. Congratulations. <laughs> we don't even get a follower an episode. Half a follower hey, per episode. We're killing it. Just got to keep it up. Just keep it up. Keep keep delivering the goods, John Derby. That's all we ask out of you. Hey, I'll keep bringing it uh, every week. Shout out to all the people clicking through Amazon.com. These uh, products just keep rolling in. We got a big order of Harry Potter books coming through. Uh, somebody got a Kong Active Feather Teaser Catnip wand toy gee huh. wonder <laughs> you think wonder scoops is that. kicking it with that thing <laughs> uh i hope if you go to 86 charles or if you go to our facebook page facebook.com slash 86 charles you can find the feed from the last episode uh a picture of one small lovely cat in a lion mane <laughs> dog cat costume <laughs> shout out to scoops wearing a lion mane um i I could never pull the trigger. I always say I'd like a lion's mane, but I just could never do it. I wouldn't put it on my cat. No, I would. Yeah, I totally it, would. I totally would. But yeah, shout out to people who stick. I mean, maybe is there just nothing to do in Alaska? You just sit online and look for <laughs> things to dress up your cat See, in. I don't even know if that's uh, true. I feel like they do all sorts of things there. He's just, you know, it's powerful. Powerful Rick. He's just out doing things in, in nature, probably camping. No, he... Oh, oh, we've got an um, aromatherapy essential oil diffuser here. Ooh. Ooh, very nice. I feel peaceful and calm just reading about <laughs> it. Aromatherapy essential oil diffuser, Ur Power 300 milliliter wood grain ultrasonic cool mist, whisper quiet humidifier with color LED lights changing in four timer settings, waterless auto shut. That's the description of the product. Wow. That's the longest description I've ever read of a product. But it sounds very peaceful. Does that come with LSD? Oh man, now you're onto something. That sounds like That's, that sounds like a hand in hand kind of a thing. John Derby, other than eighty six Charles dot com slash Amazon, where can the people find us? Oh well, I think you could go to the Instagrams, you could go to the Twitters, and we're at Company Blaster. Uh, we are, I think, anywhere you find a podcast. Stitcher, Tumblr, YouTube, Facebook, Stitcher, iTunes, iTunes, subscribe, go ahead and give us a little review. Anything. Tell us how much you hate my nasally whiny voice. That'd be fun. It's not whiny. Yeah. And I take out most of the sniffles, so it's not that bad by the time it goes out. <laughs> it's what I do. It's I, these, I it's spend these... hours over here cutting out sniffles. Right, it's these damn cats in the, <laughs> in the sniffling. That is a large price to pay for non-killers to share my space. Oh man, if you only knew, <laughs> if you only knew, John Derby, we're gonna we're gonna start. We'll start a fund. We'll get you a kitten by the end of the year. Yeah. You need a kitten in your. I life. will start an alternate fund to keep a kitten out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we've got dueling funds going. <laughs> you hear that, America? Let's get let's get John Derby a kitten. It'll change his life. Maybe he'll grow a soul. Ugh, God, that would be the that's like the last thing I need. John Derby, it's that time again, Ooh. and you're not allowed to 86 kittens, but you have to <laughs> 86 something. I'm all, I'm well prepared this time. We're 86 in the Powameca Cafe. Oh, in its wow. brief 24 you were so hour run. So excited about it. It's already over. It's already over. It was one night only. Uh, well, too bad we missed it. Yeah. And those terrible cover bands. Powameca Cafe, Tupac like songs. Tupac, gone before its time. California. Knows how to party. Yeah, it's a California chicken club sandwich. <laughs> <sighs> mm. All right, I think that's it. Now let me welcome everybody to the wild. A state that's untouchable like I am now. The new boy in the neighborhood lives downstairs and it's understood. He's there just to take good care of me. Like he's one of the